The Food and Drug Administration is giving companies two years to stop using artificial flavors. Did you ever think the taste of your favorite snack could be a hot topic of debate? Snack time. Every day, our taste-driven choices lead us down supermarket aisles, and often we're picking between natural flavors and artificial flavors. Uh -uh. But are artificial flavors truly the bad guys? And are natural flavors always as pure and innocent as they seem? It Everything. makes you feel good. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. but what it's is a good? natural, it's natural. It's natural. <laughs> Today, we're diving deep into this flavorful feud, exploring lab secrets and nature's own surprises. Stick around. What you discover might just influence your next snack choice. To find out if artificial flavors are harmful and if natural flavors are truly pure, we first need to define these terms. Artificial flavors are chemically derived compounds. While some mirror the taste of natural foods, others can represent entirely new flavors. Think of the unique taste of blue raspberry or the vibrant taste in those strawberry candies with a sour twist. You must have wondered why these flavors taste the same whether you're snacking in New York or New Delhi. That's the magic of artificial flavors. They ensure consistency across products globally. But is consistency really worth it? One might wonder, why even turn to artificial flavors? The first is consistency. With artificial flavors, you're guaranteed the same taste every single time. Second, there's versatility. Artificial flavors make way for unique taste sensations. Lastly, there's the matter of cost effectiveness. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. While artificial flavors might sound like a win-win for manufacturers, the real cost might be borne by our health. Some research might give you second thoughts. Take Splenda, for instance. Many recognize it by its chemical name, sucralose. Touted as the zero-calorie sweetening messiah, it seemed like the perfect answer to our sugar cravings. But is it? Research from the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health paints a different picture. It's been linked to a decrease in beneficial gut bacteria, releases toxins when heated, and even meddles with our body's insulin response in blood sugar levels. But it's not just Splenda. Did you know that diacetyl, another artificial flavor, is known for its buttery flavor? It's not all sweet with diacetyl. Workers in popcorn factories have suffered from popcorn lung due to exposure. The CDC flags a connection between diacetyl exposure and abnormal lung function. You might be thinking, is your gut at risk from artificial food additives? While there's little direct evidence linking them to digestive problems, some mouse studies suggest a connection between artificial sweeteners and gut bacteria diversity. However, these studies used high doses, and the effects on humans remain uncertain. Artificial flavors have mixed research findings. Some studies indicate a link between artificial sweetener consumption and body mass index, or BMI, while others suggest they may aid in weight loss. On a related note, did you know that the World Health Organization classifies processed meat as carcinogenic? Nitrites and nitrates, which are artificial flavors in processed meats, have been linked to colorectal cancer. Leading the bisphenol A, or BPA, in food packaging has also been associated with cancer risk and endocrine disruption. Also, while artificial flavors are great at mimicking basic tastes, they sometimes fall short of capturing the full depth and complexity of natural flavors. It's like comparing a printed picture of a rose to holding an actual one. Both can be beautiful, but there's a richness to the real thing. Now, natural flavors come directly from plants or animals. It's like the real deal, even if the end flavor doesn't exactly match the original source. The FDA labels it as natural if it has its roots in a plant or animal. Most of us equate natural with healthier. They usually carry that authentic taste, giving a hint of the original source. Natural flavors are derived from real elements like essential oils and fruits. They're all about keeping it real. But are they really healthy for you? Have you ever thought of where some colors like certain red dyes come from? It comes from crushed bugs. Even though nature is great, it's unpredictable. These flavors might have components from common allergens like corn or soy. And since manufacturers are not required to put down the sources of natural flavors, you may not know how it will trigger your allergies. Despite the natural tag, up to 90% of the ingredients in natural flavors might be chemicals including things like BHA and propylene glycol, which is found in antifreeze. Think of them as mouth perfumes. The chemicals that make your dish soap smell delightful can be similar to what's termed a flavor in food. Have you ever heard of castorium? It's sourced from beaver's anal secretion, which oddly smells like vanilla. While not harmful in tiny amounts, 
Its gross factor is undeniable. It's less used now, mainly due to its non-kosher nature and rarity, yet it might still be in some products. A flavor enhancer often found in Chinese dishes is called monosodium glutamate has been linked to obesity, metabolic issues, and even damage to reproductive organs. But natural flavors are not the villains. For instance, cocoa isn't just for delicious chocolate treats. It's loaded with antioxidants that boost your health. Then there's stevia. It's been used in South America for hundreds of years. It's natural, derived from a leaf, and people there have used it to sweeten food and even treat burns and stomach problems. And guess the best part? It's 200 times sweeter than sugar, but has zero calories. The FDA with other global bodies defines natural and artificial. Both undergo checks, but standards might differ based on their origin and processing. Artificial ones are crafted in labs, but undergo strict checks. Similarly, natural ones are screened for any harmful elements. If the tests are passed, they join the FDA's grass list, meaning they're considered safe. But remember what we said about MSG? Found in Japan in the 1900s, it made food tastier. Post-World War II, Americans loved it, and by the 1950s, it was on the grass list. The FDA should ensure food safety, but thanks to the grass or generally recognized as safe category, many additives skip the usual rigorous checks. The alarming part? Companies can slip these into products without the FDA's knowledge. That leaves potentially unknown chemicals on our plates. And who's overseeing all this? If you think the FDA has everything under control, you might want to think again. Because in the maze of grass listings and industry studies, there's a lot more gray area than you might expect. Surprisingly, it is the producers themselves. They're allowed to conduct their own studies and, based on those, declare their products safe. They even form their expert panels, which can have their own employees. It is no surprise that money can sway their decisions, given there's no strict oversight from the FDA. Did you know that your favorite flavor might be harming the environment? Every flavor comes with an eco price tag. Lab-made artificial flavors might use environment-harming chemicals, but mass-producing natural ones can harm the soil and water, which, as a result, affects the organisms. After all, not every natural flavor is collected correctly. Over-demand can lead to over-harvesting, endangering species, or unfair labor practices. Natural flavors with their multitude of compounds often taste richer. Take orange juice. Some boast about being natural and not from concentrate. However, to keep it fresh, flavors have to be added. And biotech is complicating things further. They can produce natural flavors using genetically engineered bacteria. It's still natural, but far from the traditional sources. While synthetic vanilla can mimic real vanilla, some flavors like strawberry are hard to replicate. Real vanilla from beans costs a lot, mostly because it comes from hard-to-grow tropical orchids. Artificial vanilla can be made cheaper in labs from paper pulp or petroleum derivatives. Chemical-wise, both are identical, but there's an environmental twist. Take Masoya lactone, a coconut-like flavor, as an example. Harvesting this substance kills trees, but in the labs, no trees are harmed. But artificial methods can sometimes be less green, like those that derive flavors from oil or result in wastewater. So why is this a difficult choice to make? Marketing shapes our choices. Have you ever noticed products using natural to lure health-focused shoppers? But is our love for these products genuine, or is it marketing's magic? Sometimes we favor a taste merely believing it's natural. Whenever we are at a grocery store, we always pick out the label that says natural. The placebo effect isn't limited to medicines. Does an all-natural tag make us think it's healthier? In the ongoing debate between artificial and natural flavors, we can say that neither one of them is the hero or villain for us. There's no one-size-fits-all answer. What you can do is check labels carefully for your preference and try to cut back on processed foods altogether. If you like this video, then make sure to check out this video that explains the complications of lab-grown meat.